Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, thanks very much for bearing with me. I had a little, little, little taste of that bug last week, and so consequently I, I was sort of under, but everybody here did a good job. We, we carried on, and and we got very much involved in the whole issue of the Dr. King's Day, and and we announced that, and and uh, there was a it was a good program as I understand, and we're going to have a, we're going to have a schedule here on the on the tube here, as to you could watch the the, the program. It was a six hour program, so we're going to they've broken it down into uh, I think three segments, and so this way you'll be able to see what the program was all about. It, it was a it was a great show. Okay, fine. Well, now let's get on down with the business now at hand. As usual, you know, I'm always I've got to make my little my point about the the vets, uh, you know, because in all due respect, I think it's very very important that we get all the veterans out and and go to the VA and get their card, business card, and more specific one little specific piece about this piece is that if you notice, I've got my card in my hand here. That's my VA card. Uh, uh, and the bottom line is that uh, I was going to throw out something out from the standpoint of saying that when you see someone on the corner asking for money or uh, trying to solicit money from you, if you'd ask them to give them, show you the card, you may want to give them $2 or 5 bucks. If they don't have the card, give them $0.50. Cents. I think just just something from the stand, and if they and if they are a vet, then if, if necessary, just put them in the car and take them down to the VA and get their card. And if they're not, take them maybe to an appropriate uh, agency that will take care of those folks who are out there, and, you know, in the cold or whatever. Okay, but I want to make sure we make that point across. And for those families out there, if you've got a vet at home and and, and right up front with you, and they're in need of services of, of, from the Veteran Administration, take them down to the VA, whether it's on the Hill here in the Portland area or in Vancouver. They're, they're, they're very, very accommodating and whatever. Okay. Well, let's get on with our show. What we're going to do today is that uh, I don't know if you, I know the number of you just haven't uh, picked up the Oregonian. Uh, it, it has changed, but it still is the newspaper for the state. And um, they've got in the opinions column of the the paper today. They've got uh, sort of a little update as to what's to come in this new legislature. Because one, the, the Democrats dominate both uh, the House and also the Senate, and there are a number of bills that are going to be that are going to be discussed and. And there's going to be pros and cons and the like and whatever. But I noticed I, I like the, um, the, the the front of the paper here. It says, uh, Opinion, 2015 Legislature, Oddball Bill Bowl. Okay? So that's going to be, they're going to be doing this. And it's going to be very interesting. So I don't have all the background material on this, but I, I, I invited both Republicans and Democrats. And uh, I've got both today. And that starting off the show will be um, with yours and yours and mine and yours truly, John Sweeney. John, welcome. How's it going? Glad to be here again. Good, good. John, John's a, the, the Democrat. So what we're going to do? We're going to spend some time with John, and uh, he's going to give us a sort of a feel of what he's what he what he has been hearing uh, about uh, what's going to happen in the legislature as far as the Democrats are concerned and what they and the bills that they introduced and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right, John. Let's talk about this stuff. Okay. Well, one thing, uh, <clears throat> the legislative session, they, they've changed a little bit now, but they usually uh, start off with, their, they could have three or 4,000 uh, bills in the hopper right from day one. Three or 4,000? Yeah, that could be in just in the House, and then uh, two or 3,000 in the Senate. So uh, That's a lot of reading, John. <clears throat> that's why they, most of them don't get read, and the fact that, <laughs> but uh, I've been there many times, and uh, they have a... Uh, program that starts right off uh, and you can as you go down the list of them you'll see there's there's a lot of duplication mm -hmm. so they get do a lot of consolidation to get some things out and um, get it down and then some of them don't have a ghost of a chance you know and because mm -hmm. uh, uh, sometimes they do something for a constituent you, you'll see some in that in the paper there mm -hmm. that talk about it and they uh, sometimes will introduce something for a constituent knowing it doesn't stand a ghost of a chance, but, you know, they still uh, have a constituent and they will uh, do something unless it's morally objectionable to them, they will mm -hmm. present it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got one uh, one time uh, in a called precinct representative mm -hmm. to change precinct uh, 
committee person, you know, because they like to run around saying PCP, PCP. I mm -hmm. says, you know, that's like a carcinogen, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so I've had things uh, introduced through the legislators and and we can discuss that a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, yeah. So, now, you've gone to several <clears throat> meetings of late and, and yeah. have, have they sort of singled out or kind of focused in on some of the ones that uh, they felt that might be, be responsible and Oregonians could can see a, a benefit, if you will, to those bills? Right. What and what some of the beneficial what, bills? Yeah, what you're looking at now with with the Democrats co controlling the House, the Senate, and, and the... Uh, and the governorship. And the governorship. There, right? there could be a lot of uh, real left-leaning uh, stuff flying through. And uh, there was a money guru, uh, Rick Adelman, was talking about federally with the uh, Republicans in charge of the, the Congress and... Uh, and a president being under the uh, Democrats, that uh, your money should do real good investment-wise because the uh, extreme stuff left and right is not going to go anywhere. Mm. Because if it gets through the Senate and it comes to the uh, president, he'll veto it. And the stuff that's that's uh, to the left is not going to make it through the, uh, the, the Congress. So there's going to be for at least the next couple of years, some real stability money-wise. Mm, really? So, yeah. So that's, that's that's looking, looking, you're speaking the national stuff, nationally, too. Nationally, yes. Right. you got the President of the United States, who basically has the veto power. That's correct. And then the, the Republicans uh, control the House mm -hmm. and also the Congress, I mean, the Senate side, okay? Correct. On the national perspective. Correct. And, and the thing for most people to understand is the money bills start in the House, whether you're talking the state level okay. or the uh, federal level, they okay. start in the House. Okay, okay. And of course, like Nebraska, they have... Just the house, no, okay. no senators. Okay. So when you so when you're saying something about the finance uh, up in that area aspect yeah. of it, so you're saying the the, uh, the Republican House, let's say from a national perspective, would introduce a bill that would uh, I would uh, decrease uh, what what's uh, taxes, uh, increase taxes. Which of those do you that think? They all have to start in the house. They all start in the house, right? That's correct. See, that's so all the money bills start in the house, whether it's state or federal. That's okay. The, okay. just the way it is. Okay. Because they figure that. The uh, House of Representatives, uh, whether they're uh, federal or state, have two-year terms, and, okay. and they're supposedly uh, closest to the people, so to speak. Okay. Of course, they don't act that way a lot okay. of times, but the deal is that that's that's the theory behind it. Okay. And then, uh, of course, then they it goes goes up to that up to the Senate, and then and if there's a difference, and they have a uh, a conference to. To get them together, the same if, uh, a bill on other subjects would start mm -hmm. in the Senate, and then come down to the House. If there's a difference, then they would have a a conference to see, okay, okay. what do they agree okay. on, and then they go to either the governor of the states and then the president in, in a national. Okay. So, okay. But that's so, what we're looking at. So, right so when you think left and right, a lot of times people tend to associate left and right. Left from the standpoint, it's a Democrat. Usually Democrat. Right, yeah. Democrat. And on the right side, it was a Republican, right? Usually, yeah. I mean? And so from the national perspective, uh, the, 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 the balance of the deal, the president is identified with the left, and the yeah. Republicans, are the House and the Senate, are identified with the right. Correct. So if they pa they can pass those to the bill, but when it gets to the president... <laughs> He may say veto, the veto yeah. pen. Correct. Now, when you come for the state level aspect of it, it's just the opposite here. It, 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 actually, well, not opposite, but it's all in one because you got the, the, the president, i.e., governor now. Yeah. It was a Democrat, right? Yeah. Kitzhopper. And then you've got the House and the Senate, both, right? Who are Democrats, right? Mm -hmm. So but, if yeah. anything passed, then if it goes through, look, to the one, it would probably, the, the, the governor will automatically just sign off on it. Well, Fortunately, right? we have yeah. have quite a few conservative Democrats. So, conservative some, Democrats you, 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 are there? Yes, you know, it's there are liberal Republicans too. Okay, so, yes, yes. But yes. anyway, the deal is. But that's how it's going to go. Okay. And the other thing to remember is that with the the states, when there's a bill coming up, the amendments have to be germane to the bill. Mm -hmm. So if it's on automobiles, just the amendments have to be on automobiles. Mm -hmm. But in the federal. The, they don't have that restriction. So you, what happens a lot of times, you have a real nice bill that, mm -hmm. that everybody can include, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. Then the amendments come on, what I call dirty skirt uh, amendments, could be on anything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens is this bill that they, everybody really wants, then you have someone or, or some ones, they tack on abortion and gun control, and next thing you know, nobody gets anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have some of these people say, well, it wasn't good enough for you. So they voted it down. It's kind of like you weren't going to get a whole loaf, so they weren't going to give you a half loaf either. So it just depends on how the feathers hit the fan. But then from a national perspective, there's a lot of personal politics there. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. really heavy personal. Yeah. But from when you get to Oregon, they're not necessarily specifically identified specifically with Oregon. 
but you got all the other states, if you will, that are going to be throwing stuff out there on the table. But in Oregon, uh, we've got issues here. You think there's going to be more personal politics on this end of it? Oh, yeah. You have a lot of prima donnas down there. Really? Oh, they, but the Democrats run, run the whole deal. It What's doesn't the deal? make any difference. You, ha deal. you have, have uh, Democrats and Republicans that are really some peacocks, and they really strut a lot. And, okay. uh, and some people, they want to uh, appease them, really suck up to them. So that's mm -hmm. how... Mm -hmm. You get a lot of garbage, but the deal is you still have that uh, element that says, no, this isn't any good. Okay, okay. So we got, uh, let's say you, you said on the table here in Oregon, just in Oregon, yeah. imagine imagine the numbers up in the, from a national perspective. You said about 4,000 4, issues, if you will, where someone has presented and said, look, we need to make a change of this, or I want to introduce this, this is right. new stuff, or whatever, <clears throat> right? You got right. What can we do now to, to talk a little, let's talk a little bit about um, what were some of the areas, uh, you, you've, been, you've been going to these various meetings and whatever, but what were some of the areas that you felt uh, was, was of interest? Let's say uh, that you think something might, might pass and something that might not pass. Can you talk about something like that? Well, one of it is um, is, is funding, because funding. you're talking taxes. Really. Taxes. Let's get right to, get down to, to the meat. three letter meat. word yeah. that yeah. really stands Ta out. T A X. T A X. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, now, in what form? Uh, well, they're talking about needing more money for at, for everything. And a lot of it is education. It just seems like uh, you're you're pouring money down a, a rat hole because the more you give them, the more they need, and it doesn't seem like they're producing for it. And my state representative, uh, the Democrat, and I proposed some things for him and he says such as doing away with uh, the uh, mortgage exemption, you know, the interest in the uh, uh, property tax exemption and stuff. He says, but those are popular. I says, wait a minute, you said you needed more money. Mm -hmm. And you're talking, you want to go to a sales tax. Don't you understand people don't want a sales tax? Plus the fact, if you have a sales tax, you have to have another bureaucracy to run that thing. Whereas if you just eliminated a few things, then the deal is, you don't increase the size of government. And I told him, I says, you know, if you went to, did away with all the deductions and exemptions on personal income taxes, it'd cost me $4,800 a year, you know, 400 bucks a month. But I'd rather pay it in one chunk than turn around and be a nickel dime to, every time I turn around. You know, uh, people, when they come to Oregon and a few other states where they don't have a sales tax, they're kind of stunned, you know, they buy something for four ninety five mm -hmm. and they got a fistful of, of coins and they get a nickel back, you know. <laughs> Just, what is this, you know? <laughs> so, you know, it's and the thing is that uh, a lot of people j jockey the sales tax and think a lot of that gets uh, pocketed. Because I remember going to uh, Washington and a friend of mine went into a restaurant and they rang it up separate where it had been no sales tax, but they charged us like it was together mm -hmm. and they pocketed at three cents. Mm, mm, so mm, there's, mm. Uh, it's just, and all taxes are an income tax because you have to have a, an income to pay it. Right, right, In right. fact, I almost got in a fight with some little guy because he talked about his property tax. And I said, you don't go out in the backyard and dig a bucket bucket of dirt for the tax man, you take a money. Mm -hmm. All taxes are what, income what, what do you think the attitude is in regards to the whole issue of sales tax? Because we don't have a sales tax in this state. Not yet. But, but, but uh, what do you think? Where, 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 where is it going? You think there's a... There's a if if there's enough, if say they pass it, and the governor signs it, there's somebody can get a uh, uh, ballot measure to put it on the ballot. To you know whether they they would do it to put it on the ballot and have it shot down, or whether somebody actually has to take them to court or or take them to uh, an, an initiative to put it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that's uh, kind of raising its ugly head again is, is gun control. Gun control, okay. And they're changing it and they're saying it's uh, gun safety, you know. But no, it's gun control. And, and gun control is not about guns, it's about control. And one thing, uh, and it just isn't just, just about, say, the gun part, but the thing is about the control. And look around uh, Portland, and I'm sure other cities, where they're building all these apartments without parking. So it'll make it inconvenient for people to own automobiles. Now, in 1965, I drove a taxi cab, and I know even today, I talked to some of them, over in northwest Portland, a few parts of town, you get a call in a taxi cab about the beginning and the end of the month, and you show up and hear somebody, uh, or someone or someones, and they're out there on the curb with all their possessions to move it in your taxi cab. Mm. And the deal is, the biggest thing to have is a television and a microwave. Mm -hmm. And then you move them from one 
furnished apartment to another furnished mm -hmm, apartment. Mm -hmm. And I did that for about six months in 1965. And that's, uh, if you had certain vehicles, that's the calls you were getting in. Uh, so is that is there something on the bill? Is there a bill to, to say, talk to that issue? Talking about, about gun control and the deal is it, and it's, and they're, and they're changing the thing, calling it safety, but it really is just gun control. And the real thing, it's about control. And the other thing, if you look around... Control uh, in what way? Let's talk about that. Now. You know, safety, you mentioned safety and control. They, well, what do you, they, what know, you they know that the gun control won't fly, so they say, it's for your safety. And so many people do so many things for, your, for safety, it's for your safety. Mm -hmm. uh, California has 140,000 prison spaces in the state system alone. Not counting the federal, federal, not counting city and county jails. Texas has 150,000. Uh, what about Oregon? Oregon is system. Or, the Oregon system is just under 15,000. 15,000 available beds. Is uh, that what you're saying? No, no they have 15,000 beds. You know, they may not all be available, oh, yeah, but the deal is that, <laughs> that they're full. See, it's all the, the criminal justice industrial complex and the prison industrial complex. It's it's all about money. It's not about justice. It's about okay, money. Okay, okay, okay. So we so we're going to have quite a quite a bit then. I, I take bet. it as going to be a discussed aspect of it. But they found that in some issues they changed their their bent a little bit, but they found in it that they've been uh, successful. And so this is what they're trying now: is that you're doing this for your safety. Okay. And okay. actually, it's what it is. It's to take from you. Okay. Well, we want to spend more time on that. I think that's a show in itself. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is that at least we got the introduction. Uh, this thing starts pretty shortly, I guess, and mm -hmm. people are going to get going in the session mm -hmm. and the like. And then what we'll do is that uh, we'll then organize uh, uh, some, some future shows, uh, and hopefully you can bring us an update on the whole Ds in terms of where they are in various positions. You bet. Is that okay? You bet. All right, John. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break, and then we'll, uh, we'll get on with Art Robinson from the Republican Party. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, the Oregon Votes Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, as you know, I've, we spent a, a few minutes with the um, Democratic Party and John Sweeney, and now we're going to spend some time with the, we have, we're, we're, we're fortunate to have the chairman of the Republican Party for the state of Oregon, who has been in his seat for the last year or so. There's going to be another, whether or not he might be interested in getting into, uh, going back and vying for that position again. We don't know, but we may find out today. You never know. But anyway, he's here. Art Robinson is going to be here with us. And um, so we're going to take this opportunity to, to chat with him and, and get a sense of what happened over this past year and, and how he felt about uh, sitting in that seat. I mean, everybody was just, I mean, they're so co cooperative in that, in that, those kind of environments, both the Democrats and Republicans. I mean, they're just great folks, and it's all about Oregon and what they can do for you, the public, and the voting public, because it is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people here in the state of Oregon. Now, if we get in a national standpoint, it's very opinionated. <laughs> I mean, it's very, very opinionated. But in Oregon, we don't do things. It's all about Oregon first year, right? Right on. All right. Um, How you doing? That's that's what I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's the interesting thing about you. You know, you, you are, you're all over the state. You're running all over the place. But besides that, you're also a business person. I mean, you. you well, been, I'm a scientist. You, you're a scientist, which is a business. You know, you're, yeah. you're a business for quite some time, and um, we've had several shows with Art before. But for those of you who have not been able to um, look in the inventory 
a directory and, and get, get a feel for, for Art when I interviewed him uh, th over the past year or so. And he's always been available and available. As you can notice, I, I had to pull him out of his, 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 uh, his arena, if his business area there. And he is, he's dressed for business, but he's also, he's out there on the road, if you will, representing Republicans and their issues and the like. And so we're going to take the time, uh, we're going to start off with basically kind of getting a feel for how Art got in this particular business, and, and, uh, and, then, and then we'll get right into his, his chairmanship of the Republican Party and, and give you some, give you some in, insights in terms of what he was able to accomplish, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You never know what can happen with this, but I think and we want to thank you very much for being with us, Art. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And, you know, I want to start off by saying myself in terms of how I met Art. It was kind of interesting. It's kind of a little small short story, but the idea is that uh, I met Art through Jeff Mapes, mm -hmm. my dear friend Jeff Mapes down at the Oregonian. Yeah. Uh, there was an article in the Oregonian, a Sunday Oregonian front page, and yeah. there was this business about the, the new chairman of the Republican Party in Art Robinson, and I read the article, and I said, gee, this, this is a very interesting, besides the show, but a very interesting article. And uh, like Jeff, he tends to, you know, he's a very investigative reporter. So I, I thought I'd say, well, look, I need to call this guy. He's very interested, very positive. And so I did. I called Art up. And there's all of a sudden, the next day, it was a Sunday when I called him. Monday, he was sitting up there at Norma's Kitchen. We were having a cup of coffee and, mm -hmm. and talking about uh, the article. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, the next thing you know, I... Uh, he he hog ties me in there, and next thing I know, I'm the engagement chair of the Republican Party, which really excited me because the fact of the matter is it, it wasn't about a minority uh, chairperson, but it was the engagement chair. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that was a very interesting piece. So from that point on, we've had a relationship. Uh, I, I respect I respect Art, and I'll say it publicly, Art, I really respect you and, and all the things that you've done for the party. We, it, was, it was a very divisive kind of a group uh, before you took it over. And, uh, but you, you, in all due respect, you, you've gone beyond that point. And, and in fact, it's, it's even helped the Democrats to a certain degree because I've, I've even tried to get them to come on the show because they had supposed to be an exemplary group aspect mm -hmm. of it. But my dear friend Bob Williams, well, he said he's going to continue. He's still trying. <laughs> to, to, to kind of get this debate, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, a very positive debate about Oregon. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line, we haven't been able to get the Democratic uh, chair on. But you have always been available for the Oregon Voters Digest, and it's really been a benefit, if you will. So I want to thank you for that, okay? Now, let's talk about art. Okay, one, let's talk about, um, and like I said before, well, what do you do professionally as a business person? I'm a scientist. You're I'm okay. a physical scientist. I work on biochemistry and, and medical diagnostic research. And what do you do? What, what, what does that mean? I mean, as from a lay standpoint, you look in a laboratory. In a laboratory for 50 years. Well, let me throw something out to you, because as soon as you said that to me, I reacted by saying, okay, what about sickle cell? You know, because I'm very, in, in, yeah. the, in Multnomah County, in Portland yeah. area, uh, the urban league and blah, blah, blah routine. What, what, what is sickle cell? You brought that issue up. Yeah. Kind of give that as an example. Well, sickle cell anemia, and it's actually linked to Oregon, because the cause of it was discovered by Linus Pauling. And we worked together for 15 years, and he did this before we worked together. On sickle cell, so you yeah. worked with sickle, it. Too. Sickle cell, we didn't work on sickle cell together, mm -hmm. but sickle cell is a uh, genetic disease that causes the uh, red cells to clump, sort of crystallize mm -hmm. in the blood vessels, and then they can't get to the periphery, it's very painful, and leads to an early death. But it's, a, uh, it's an odd disease because the reason it's so prevalent of people among people of African extraction is that if you carry only one of the genes, you have a, you're immune from malaria. So if you have both genes, you're very ill and will live a short life. But if you carry one of them, you, it carries immunity from malaria, and yeah. that's why it became very widespread in Africa because malaria is so bad. Hmm. And of course, it's in the United States too. Progress has been made, and the other important thing about it is it's the first molecular disease. Disease caused by one tiny change in a protein molecule, and that was uh, the first time a molecular disease ever been discovered. Mm -hmm. And progress has been made, but it's still a scourge. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I, I noticed in Jeff's article, he was sort of like a it was sort of ridicule about the urine because you, you basically do a lot of well, urine uh, testing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Linus and so I started it. We started a field 40 years ago called metabolic profiling. Mm -hmm. It's a major part of another field called metabolomics. And the goal is to use breath, urine, and blood and the chemicals in them to be able to predict the health of an individual in the future, to see diseases before they occur, uh, to monitor diseases more effectively, basically to measure health quantitatively 
with respect to the things that can go wrong with mm -hmm. you. Uh, for to improve uh, the le length of life and the quality of life, mm -hmm. and since we when we started, we could measure about a hundred substances in a urine sample, and it took us six hours. Wow! Machines we use today can measure five thousand chemicals in your urine in one minute, and that those chemicals are being made in your body, and uh, the amount of them uh, have a tremendous amount of information about your current and future health. Mm -hmm. So when you go to the doctor's office to give him a urine sample, he measures That's six things. We're measuring 5,000 and trying to develop these tests for the future. How, how many, how, how much are they measuring? Let's say for that, I just go in the regular VA or whatever they ask for. Well, if you go in the VA and you give them a blood sample, right. they measure about 30. But in a urine sample, they typically just use a dipstick and measure half a dozen. But a half a dozen. And you are measuring? We're measuring 5,000. 5,000. And what are you doing with the information after you? Well, what you, you, you do is to look for patterns that are indicative of particular diseases. Mm -hmm. Even back in the 70s, using this technique with one to 200 substances, we could diagnose multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, breast cancer, uh, could tell how old you were physiologically. Hmm. And that was when we first started out with a couple hundred substances. But the, the methods we used then were so difficult and we had to build all our own equipment that they couldn't be applied. And mm -hmm. we demonstrated that pattern recognition on urine breath composition had tremendous health information in mm -hmm. it, but we were using tools that couldn't have been applied in medicine because they were so leading edge mm -hmm. in analytical science. Mm -hmm. But today, analytical science has developed to the point that uh, it, you could commercially measure 5,000 mm -hmm. uh, samples in a uh, 5,000 substances a urine sample for maybe $10. Wow. And wow. that uh, may have tremendous impact on preventive medicine. Mm -hmm. and, the work we did in the 70s and have continued until today is now a, a large research field. Many people work in the field. We were the first ones. What do they do with that information? I mean, do they share that with one? Well, with the, well it, it, it currently it's still a research field, which okay. means it's published in the scientific literature. Okay. Books, right. papers, uh, people who work in the field keep publishing the improvements they've made. Mm -hmm. But it's gotten to be to the point where it's practical, and so we're starting to calibrate the technique for application. And that's uh, caused some fun because we have 7,000 volunteers around Oregon mm -hmm. who are participating in a program where they give us a urine sample every mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. So I'm the first congressional candidate that ever asked the voters for a urine sample. That's interesting. And the Democrats made a lot of uh -huh. fun of that. Well, but actually, it's, it uh, has a great potential to improve the quality and uh, and and length of human life. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I mean, when we first met and we started talking about this piece, and I was very interested in the whole issue of sickle cell because that's been an, in, mm -hmm. an interest here within this particular area of Oregon in the Portland metropolitan area aspect and elsewhere for that matter. Yeah. Uh, and the, But the idea is that uh, I, I must apologize to you because I was going to try to get the Urban League to participate, <laughs> if you will, or seniors, yeah. right? Seniors yeah. or whatever. Sickle cell is easy because it's easy to see the change in your hemoglobin, okay. your, the okay. proteins okay. that carry your, the oxygen in your blood. Mm -hmm. Easy to detect and uh, but hard hard to cure because it, all of your blood uh, cells carry okay. this uh, this uh, damaged protein. Okay, so it's, it's still not yours, but so, so the opportunity disease. is still available there with you, right? right. For, for urine, oh, uh, we're, across the board. Yeah, you, well, you, we're you. working on uh, things that are uh, uh, really remarkable. So you wouldn't say no to urine? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> right. Well, we have 7,000 volunteers giving us samples, and we need 15,000. You need 15,000? So like oh, yeah, yes, I will. I will. Here I, in the studio. Hey, I'm number one. I'm number one. <laughs> I've got three guys in the studio there. They, well, it may sound too. a little weird to the average no, but, yeah, guy, right. but, but you see the high-tech methods mm -hmm. of measuring the quantities of substances in your body fluids can have a tremendous impact on right. human health. And uh, so uh, some people, that's just a waste product, but that waste product can has a tremendous amount of information in it. Breath has the same information, mm -hmm. but it's more difficult to do. Collecting mm -hmm. breath and mm -hmm. analyzing it is more difficult than analyzing mm -hmm. the same substances mm -hmm. in urine. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna, throw, I'm gonna throw something out to you, and, I, and I'll be brief and then we'll get into this other subject. You know, we, we came up with this idea with the flu aspect of it, and then they came up with this idea that, well, we had the wrong, we had the, we had the wrong strand, and then they, mm -hmm. made, they made, went out and produced all of this, this mm -hmm. serum, whatever, and it didn't mean anything, and people just, what's going on here? Well, still kind of, what, that's, what that's a different field that? than I work yeah. in, and so I don't have 
Uh, yeah, I yeah. haven't read the technical yeah, literature. Yeah, okay. uh, people want to develop uh, vaccines and so forth against mm -hmm. diseases, but the bugs that you're attack, you're fighting, have an ability to change and mutate. That does happen. And have all sorts of oddities. So it's a continual battle between the medical scientists and the uh, living things in nature that can give you ill health. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made great progress, but the people who do this, uh, uh, there are all kinds of difficulties in what they do. Right, right, right. If they, they, they come out with a vac uh, flu vaccine, say, right. and it's touted to do something, mm -hmm. and then the bug changes a little bit, or their people are different, and right. it's difficult to uh, do something to help people like that and not have uh, it not always work. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing this kind of work? 50 years. 50 years and yeah. still doing it, right? Yeah, full time, so to speak. Yeah. Now, let's get down to the politics. Uh, yeah. How? And, I mean, you're such a busy person. And I know that for a fact. But how do you, how do you find time to get into well, politics? Well, we we got in it in an odd way. We went to a town hall meeting and saw our congressman and decided mm -hmm. that maybe we could improve things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but the uh, uh, we're like uh, many other Americans mm -hmm. that are starting to come out of the woodwork they work on other things they're good at various uh, pursuits but they're worried about their state and nation mm -hmm. and more and more by the hundreds of thousands really by the millions uh, the tea party is maligned you know they try mm -hmm. to brand people but if you go to a tea party meeting you probably see a thousand people they're just ordinary productive americans that just walked out of their houses and said i got to do something i'll go over there maybe i can find something to help mm -hmm. we were fortunate to have the opportunity to run for Congress and then a greater opportunity to serve the Republican Party. And our goal was to uh, help elect candidates to office who had more common sense mm -hmm. and would lead our nation and our state in a different way. So we, we wanted to help. We felt it was our duty to help. And we were presented with a couple of opportunities. So we took them. Mm -hmm. That's not our that's not our profession. Mm -hmm. You're basically a citizen volunteer trying to help, just like thousands of other Republicans in this mm -hmm. state are volunteering and trying to help. What were the specific issues? That maybe one or two main issues that you that was well, on there, your platform. Well, there, there are many issues that you were the, going for. The uh, the best data in this past election showed that Americans were most concerned about education mm -hmm. and about the economy, jobs. And uh, third, uh, the dangers in the world, the, uh, the military mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, foreign policy dangers. Mm -hmm. uh, that was third. The first two were education, and because they're uh, the things that immediately affect their lives. Mm -hmm. If you talk to a businessman, and I've knocked on a thousand business doors mm -hmm. in this last election, uh, he may just start talking about his business and you'll learn a lot. But if he says to you, what are you going to do for me? And you say, I'm going to get the government off your back. He lights up and tells you that that's yeah, great. Because right, right. the government has been a tremendous bane to the small businessman. And mm -hmm. as you know, most new jobs are generated by small mm -hmm. businessmen. But the regulations, taxation, and, and other impediments that especially the Democrat uh, constituencies in our nation have placed on small business is causing a terrible damage. Mm -hmm. uh, it's costing millions of jobs. So that issue, the issue of where the jobs go, because mm -hmm. they're only generated by private enterprise mm -hmm. and the private enterprise is being suppressed by government. Mm -hmm. now, that issue and the issue of the deterioration in our schools. And, but that's dangerous too politically because if you suggest you want to change in the schools, they say that you don't want any schools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you suggest a change in the schools, you're demonized. You suggest a change in the you want to help the business, small businessman where the jobs are generated and your opponents say he just wants to help business. Mm -hmm. So these things are, you know, they're difficult to explain to the voters so they understand them. But those, uh, the economy and education were overwhelmingly the most important issues. Mm -hmm. And when some of the minor issues, which uh, some people don't consider minor, but many of the other issues were only of minor interest to the voters. Mm -hmm. Well, on that particular note, those two issues you're talking about, well, when you, that was your first time running in this particular situation because you were running against DeFazio, right? Yeah. But two, but still, you, yeah. you're still, were, 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 the, were, those, were those discussions, those two areas, given the amount of time necessary to educate the public to find out what the issues are and solutions to the problem, why yeah. you were running for office well, against him? Well, that, that's a problem with, uh, with politics. Uh, we tried to discuss the issues, and mm -hmm. our opponent didn't want to. Mm. Uh, he has a poor record, and if we had discussed 
the record and the issues, he's at risk. Uh, what he wanted to discuss, he kind of builds a straw man and says it's Art Robinson. He's not mm -hmm. Art Robinson, mm -hmm. but he does that. And then tries to make the people fear you. And if you're a challenger, the people don't know you. And if you tell enough falsehoods, why the people can can see yeah. a different character. Yeah. So it was very hard to discuss the issues because our, our opponent wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's politics. Mm -hmm. uh, if if the And the Republican Party has the same problem. Oregon, I'm convinced from the four years I've been involved in this, that Oregon, Oregonians are closer in view and desires to Republican principles than they are to the Democrat principles. But the Republicans have not successfully shown them that. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Republican Party has to do a better job of communicating our, our, our message. Uh, with Democrats aren't beating us so much as we are beating ourselves by not being skilled enough in bringing our message to the voters. Mm -hmm. And I saw that throughout these elections. Mm -hmm. And we need to more, have more skill and work harder. Mm -hmm. We have an army of volunteers throughout the state. And I'm, I'm confident that in the not too distant future, our, uh, our principles will begin to prevail again mm -hmm. with the electorate. It, it has been said that, uh, as you say, uh, like myself, I've, I've looked at the party, the Republican Party aspect of it, and thinking about the divide you hear mm -hmm. about so much of it, yeah. and a lot of folks just don't want to participate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What do you, what, one, what do you think brought that about? Who well, uh, I don't know. People. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. There, uh, there, there certainly are uh, difficulties in the Republican Party. I'm mm -hmm. sure there are similar difficulties oh, in oh, the yes, Democrat very much Party. So. Uh, again, we would prefer to have the issues discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a ar recent article in the Oregonian by Mr. Mapes where he wanted to discuss the difficulties in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. uh, he he hadn't studied it much, so he didn't. His facts weren't very good. But uh, we should uh, we prefer to discuss our differences within ourselves and our what we offer the Oregon Oregon people in the press. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I'm not. On your show, or yeah, yeah, even, yeah, 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 yeah. even in being interviewed by him, I, I uh, sometimes you're at a disadvantage if you won't get into the yeah, fight. Yeah, exactly. But I think that uh, on principle, the the, um, the growing pains, if you want, or the mm -hmm. difficulties within our party, just as those in the Democrat Party, mm -hmm. I don't think that's news. What's news is what we offer Oregonians mm -hmm. a better way of life, and we and we need mm -hmm. to. to we need to discuss that when we're in public. Good. Well, you know, I, I, I give a respect for Jeff, but he's working for someone, i.e. the Oregonian. Oh, well, he wants a story. Uh, he wants a story. A, but still, a, uh, but the if there's a conflict somewhere and yeah. people read the article, well, yeah. that's what but media people But the fact of the if you were running for office, I mean, the, naturally the question would be, well, why are you running? And specifically, mm -hmm. what is your platform? And, right. and, and again, specifically, what is this going to do for Oregonians at the end of the day? That's what you, you want to discuss. Well, was, did he give you that opportunity to do that? Um, well, I was running a district four. Yeah, even then, yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's, um, he's written several articles. I, um, what do you think about that? I don't want to quarrel with the media. No, no, it's not about uh, quarreling. But I mean, help him you, out. Let's help him out a bit, if he, you will. Uh, he's a, a skilled reporter, yeah. and uh, and he has uh, written quite a few things that are interesting to the people, right. and that are not incorrect. Right. Sometimes I think he does write things that are incorrect. Mm -hmm. He may not mean it that way, but mm -hmm. he does. But it's difficult to know. He's dealing with people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, I, uh, everyone has their own interests. Mm -hmm. uh, a reporter like him picks the things he wants yeah, to write that, about. That's a fact. And I don't think it's my job to second guess him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I wish he would have written a little differently mm -hmm. about us. Mm -hmm. But sometimes uh, you and I met because he yeah. wrote an article you liked. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So I, uh, he's he's a prominent media person. But who he does was saying all these negative things. That's what I was looking well, at. I, I, I'd rather he didn't, I really, didn't yeah, get too right, interested right, right, in right, 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 differences right. in our party uh, because those differences occur in the Democrat Party too. Yeah, it does. It does. They yes. occur in the Libertarian Party. They recur in all the parties yeah, because right, the right, parties right. are are people working right. together with diverse points of view. Right. right. So. Uh, um, uh, this man's a prominent reporter. People like to read what he writes, and he's written some things about us, uh, by us, I mean the Republican yeah, right, side, right, right. that are good, and he's written some things about us that I 
would have called misguided. But he'd say the same thing about me if I was reporting about him. Yeah, 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 right, right. <laughs> but, so but, I, I'm but not, I have nothing, time, nothing to say it, against Mr. Mapes. But, but run for, I've run for office on several yeah. occasions, and to the point to the point says, well, it's not me. It's mm. really what I'm presenting, if yeah. you will, to represent yeah. But the folks that I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's, there was more, more of a push on a personality. Well, this is team. this is the problem. Uh, we uh, and I found that. And I'm not just talking about him. I'm talking about and the I'm entire talking media. Uh, in helping Republican candidates right. as, the, as party chair and in running for office right. myself. Right. Yeah, you had two hats. Uh, the problem is that uh, especially those who might be at a disadvantage discussing mm -hmm. their policies. Mm -hmm. I want to discuss personalities, and they also want to discuss those personalities in many uh, dishonorable ways. Yeah, right, right. So uh, it's it's hard. Uh, it's hard. This is this last governor's race. Uh, there was some, uh, uh, some apparently misguided actions by our governor, mm -hmm. but the real point was. What would you do for Oregon if elected? Yeah, exactly. That uh, the governor has uh, has or people around him have done some misguided things. Well, there are ways to address that. Mm -hmm. But in the political campaigns, we should be talking about what we can do for Oregonians, mm -hmm. not talking about what we can get on our opponent mm -hmm. or what we can pretend to get on yeah, our right, opponent. Right, right, There's right, a lot right. of pretense. I, right. I, I've seen things on Highway 5 about me that I won't, won't even recognize yeah, the guy, right, you know, right, but that's right. the way it is. That's exactly, the way the game's exactly. played. Well, you know, I, I, when, when you, you make that last point, is that I've been in this business for so long that I, I think now you, you, you're constantly talking about term limits, if you will, for folks who elected the office. Mm -hmm. I'm now throwing another group in there, term limits for media folks. <laughs> well, that, I wouldn't do that at all, but term limits... Uh, well, I mean, put them in another group. Yeah. I mean, give an opportunity to open up the mind. The people want term limits. Yeah. It's a very popular issue. Yes, it is. Because well, we've changed. In the first hundred years of our country, a congressman mostly served one term. Mm -hmm. The average term of a congressman, the first hundred years of the United States, was about two years. Just two over years. Two years. That's it. Now it's 12. Wow. And what happens is when the individual decides he wants a career in Congress, mm -hmm. rather than he's a public servant serving for a short time, then he makes decisions based on what's good for him rather than the people. Mm -hmm. He becomes less a caretaker of our constitutional republic and more a uh, an advocate of whatever the polls show will get him ahead. Mm -hmm. And so we have, I, I'm a strong advocate for citizen volunteers who serve for a short time. Some people can keep their heads on straight and have a career and not be self-interested, mm -hmm. but it's very rare. Mm -hmm. So uh, the people are right. We should have shorter terms in office. Uh, but of course, they can do that at the ballot box now if they want to. Mm -hmm. So there's a debate whether you should, they should, but they don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their con Congress has a approval rating of about 10% right. and 90% of them are reelected because they go home and they tell long line to their people and I, you don't like Congress, but I'm not one of the ones you don't mm -hmm, like. Mm -hmm. And and they, they succeed in staying in office and they vote themselves many advantages in elections. But uh, the people are really fed up with some of the shenanigans in our government, and as a result, term limits is a very popular issue. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's talk about the, you, this other hat that you're wearing, and then the, the, the idea of chairman of the Republican Party mm -hmm. aspect of it. During that particular time, let's say within the years span of time, because you had two hats, you you were running two at mm -hmm. the same time. And before I get into that particular point, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you had you had a philosophy about a person who was actually a, like an officer in the in the party mm -hmm. should also run right? well i think so he should if he if unless there's a better candidate okay in our election now i've been the chairman of the party right. i could run for re-election right there's a man running that's got 10 times the credentials i have if i were running i'd drop out immediately for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. the guy's fantastic mm -hmm. he will be a wally hicks will be an unbelievable wally chairman. hicks this, yeah. this guy was looking and of course you know who's running for vice chairman well, of the he, republican he, party he, he, i know you recruited that's you him again you recruited that's you again. jeff but, should have some fun with that. well thing. if you know uh, people see you on this television yeah. thing they haven't read your credentials yeah. they're remarkable so we have uh, uh, uh but what i said is in general on this issue is that if someone is a volunteer, works hard in the Republican or Democrat Party mm -hmm. too, and works hard in the Republican Party, and shows an interest in these things mm -hmm. so great that he, as a volunteer, mm -hmm. with no remuneration or any, mm -hmm. very little thanks, mm -hmm. works year after year, mm -hmm. he might be a good candidate. Mm -hmm. You might be able to rely on him in office. Mm -hmm. 
And I went around saying to the county chairs and the county uh, central committees around Oregon, make sure you have great candidates for all the positions, and if you can't find one, look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. The result was five of our county chairs ran for office. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. I don't see any reason why there should be one organization that's trying to get people into office and the other is, is candidates. Mm -hmm. I, I think they should be uh, mixed. Not always, but mixed. Well, I like your point, and again, to the viewing audience, uh, the point that I got out of it was the fact of the matter is, uh, as opposed to hearing all these negative things about the Republican Party, you get an opportunity uh, you, to see whether or, not, uh, whether or not they are representing the issues. The only the negative thing about the Republican Party that really interests me yes. is that we haven't been winning enough elections. Yes, yes, yes. And I know that can change. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the arguments within the party, you know, at least my side of them, is to try to make changes that will make us more effective at delivering our message. Mm -hmm. If that means that someone who is very ineffective uh, doesn't get... I mean, I, I, have a, uh, I have a view about the elections we have going on now for mm -hmm. party chair. Mm -hmm. One of the men is so much more qualified than the other that I, uh, I support the one and, and oppose the other. But the reason is because I think one will do a better job at communicating Republican principles. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that's wrong with our party is we're losing, and it's our fault. Mm -hmm. We need to do a better job. Well, you got to get the house in order first, right? Well, and, and uh, you've been you've been you probably never have your house you know, in order. You've been working you on that. Do. You've, been, you've been working on that. I know you have been working yeah, on people, that. People, uh, people have all kinds of idiosyncrasies. We all do. Yeah, and we should be uh, uh, we should be commended and remembered for the things we do that are good that help mm -hmm. people. And if we have gotten in arguments or done things in life that are not so admirable, mm -hmm. those should be forgotten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, if you're if, in science, if you have just two or three good ideas and pursue them and push your field forward like medical science, mm -hmm. then that's wonderful. Most of your ideas aren't any good. You should be remembered for the fact that you had two or three good ones that improve people's lives. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true of these parties. Uh, they're people, and people exactly. have all kinds of idiosyncrasies, yeah. but what we should do is try to get the best out of them and not let the idiosyncrasies prevent us from functioning. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is a skill that, uh, that that one has cultivated. Well, one thing you brought to me on the table with me, and I really get the clear since I've known you, is that it's about the issues. It's That's not the person, it's the issue, and whether or not they are able to articulate, That's if you right. will, the issues that are of interest to better our way of life, education. Well, um, we, we live in a constitutional republic, right. which, has, which has just been an astonishment to the world because of the incredible progress in the human condition mm -hmm. that was caused by the creation of that constitutional republic. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in a fight to keep it. Mm -hmm. And there are many people who don't want that republic, who mm -hmm. want something else, mostly out of self-interest. And it's our problem to save the constitutional republic on a very uneven and sometimes unprincipled battlefield. Mm -hmm. Well, someone has to define that. You know, my point is that, that really 90, 95 percent of the population don't read. They don't look at the media. Mm -hmm. I know in most cases they don't understand. They need to be educated, right? Well, and that's one of the things we do here. We uh, inform and educate. Yeah, they. they no, why should they? Uh, if you live in a constitutional republic mm -hmm. and you elect to office people who are good caretakers of the rules, mm -hmm. they shouldn't have to worry about it. A free American that doesn't want to be interested in politics, uh, he's a free American. Mm -hmm. Now, when things uh, concern him and things aren't good, he needs to well, he needs to vote for sure because that's a responsibility. But um, our country should be in such good shape that that the people can live their lives without it. Without well, you know, on your, you made a point about constitutional rules. The fact of the matter is, it's not part in our, our educational well, system. Well, that's a problem. When we talk <laughs> about education, some of the essentials that our young people right. should know they, are they not being know. taught. They, but the schools more and more are controlled by government bureaucrats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a strong advocate of local control of schools. Mm -hmm. And when our schools were locally controlled, they were the best in the world. 
Now they're controlled by bureaucrats a long ways away, and they think they know how to educate our children, and they're not very good at it. Well, you know, on that particular, let's go back to when when, 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 we, you, you, when I introduced you from the standpoint of what you were doing and whatever. I know that there was an incident that you shared that, sto that story with me in your life in reference to your kids, you know, from the standpoint of an education. Education was very, very poor, and you took it upon yourself besides having these other responsibilities. Why don't you share that a bit? Well, well my wife and I, she was also a scientist. Okay. Uh, we decided we would homeschool our children mm -hmm. because first we wanted them to children learn by example mm -hmm. and we thought the example within our family was more than the, better than the example they might find elsewhere and we want a better academic for them so and all wife, of us do by the way yeah my wife that's right and my wife was uh, the teaching them typical homeschool the mm -hmm. mother is a teacher but she died when they were ages one and a half to twelve the six of them so uh it was my job. Mm -hmm. And we developed a, uh, a self-teaching homeschooling method that is now used by about 60,000 students. But uh, if, you, if you teach a child to read and you give him a disciplined program where he's exposed con continuously to good knowledge, um, higher and higher level knowledge as his brain develops, mm -hmm. um, ev almost every child can excel. Uh, there's very little difference between abilities it's mostly uh, providing them with the opportunities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, if, if we were in the schools 50 years ago that I had the for good fortune to go to, we would never have homeschooled. But there has been such a deterioration in the schools that we felt we didn't want to rely on them. That doesn't mean every kid that goes through the public schools doesn't mm -hmm. become mm -hmm. a, a, a What were the results of person. That? What were the but results of your efforts? The average, it's, like, it's sort of like this. If you were going to teach a lot of children to swim, mm -hmm and you threw a bunch of kids in the pond, some of them would swim, but some of them would drown. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way our schools are now. You can uh, Many young people come out of the schools with high ability and they accomplish things, but the schools are losing too many uh, because I think they've deteriorated in quality. So if you have, like we did six children, uh, we might say, well, put them in public school. Four of them may wind up at MIT, mm -hmm. but two of them might wind up without a good education. And we should care and for we them. We didn't want any of them to wind right. up with a good right, education. Right, right, right. What was the result of that, that effort that you, well, the wife passed away, but at the end of the day, your kids, oh, where are they? Four of them have doctorates and two will. I mean, they've done very well. Four doctorates yeah. and two will. Yeah, I get a lot of, big kick out of it. Somebody asked for Dr. Robinson in the yes. house. There are five of us. I say, which one? <laughs> I enjoy that. <laughs> okay, so getting back on the Republican Party, well, it, well look, as, look as though you, you've got some folks that you, you, you've made folks interested, if you will, in the party as a result of your involvement. You went out and did some did, did some chatting with them, recruiting and talking as you were, and all of a sudden you got folks worked very hard. And, okay, folks and, wanted to get involved. And uh, I think there have been some improvements, mm -hmm. but the people we have, the man you're running with, yeah. Wally Hicks, and your two colleagues, uh, the secretary, uh, this uh, group of the four is the most outstanding group of uh, men and women of excellence mm -hmm. that have the opportunity, the Republican Party's had an opportunity to elect in a very long time. Mm -hmm. So if I can leave that party in the hands of you and the other three, uh, I'll be happy with the whole thing. I oh, appreciate but it. Right now we're in election contest and our, our voting is February 28th and we're working hard to convince our central committee members to mm -hmm. win another election. But you know, something else about you is that you're still open to the public. In fact, Jeff is, I'm sure you, you wouldn't mind Jeff interviewing uh, uh, both of the, I guess the other folks that might be interested in running for office. Would yeah. that be available to him? Well, uh, you never say Any no to media. a reporter. Right. Uh, but when you're talking about things inside the party, there's, a different. there's inevitably some acrimony in a contest. Uh, it's a little nicer if your party shows it is that these things are internal. I think it's better that our internal selection of officers okay, right, right, right. Uh, be more within ourselves. We're not, the press can come to the election. Right, they they can come to the election. No, there's no. And no, listen to what the issues are no, and the there's platforms. No, there's no secrecy okay, involved. Okay, on that end of it. There's no secrecy involved, but I... I hope that uh, we won't be campaigning in the newspapers. So oh, no, no. We no, should no. do that with the Democrats. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just quietly maybe introduce <laughs> Jeff to come on the show with you. you we'll oh, quietly I, do uh, it. that'd be great. That, yeah, that, he's a very you? good interviewer. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's good. This, well, this he's, is a very skilled journalist. I'd like to convince him. Well, he's been around for a few years, you know. <laughs> I'd like to convince him to be a little more attuned to Republican views, but he's a skilled journalist, oh, yeah. and oh, yeah. uh, he, uh, that 
and that that is a skill. That's a job. So I'm not here to tell you I like everything he writes, yes, right. but I'm surely not here to tell you that he's not a skilled journalist because he is. Well, media is wide range. You've got radio, you've got audible, you've got visual. Yeah. I mean, you've got Lars out there, you know, and Lars, Lars is, is fantastic. Doing, Lars is doing his thing, and there are other talk show hosts. That's and, an incredible you know, skill. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you know oh, what it's, it's a tough. That, it's, you, you look at Lars Larson. That man, uh, you know, three hours. He has to know all the issues. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, on yeah. top of everything, speak perfect grammar. Yes, yes. And deal with all yes. these people. The skill that the, the man, we have several others in the country that are mm -hmm, skilled, you mm -hmm. know, Rush Limbaugh and Hannity. Uh, Lars Larson has a skill that people don't understand how, what a skill that is. And he tends to be uh, on the side of the issues the Republicans are on. And he's a great blessing to the Republican Party in this state. Not because he just rubber stamps what Republicans mm -hmm, want, mm -hmm. but because he generally shares our views. And uh, to have a man of that skill mm -hmm. sharing our views with people on the radio is a tremendous uh, thing. Oh, it is. You know, I, I might add, even at this point in time, on my side of the aisle, if you will, uh, the 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 other entity that's out there, in all due respect, is, is, is Reverend Sharpton, in, in all due respect. <laughs> well. And, you know, but my point is that he's able to, he's getting to the people to read to read more. And, and, and they'll very much so. Well, very I hope much they so. read enough to see the through some of the things he said. Well, but, you know, but, but that's <laughs> but, it's communication. Oh, no, I know and that. That's what it's all about. And, I mean, and the it, thing it, is that if, if you, uh, uh, we, uh, I've, I've campaigned to a lot of Democrats right, in our right. area. I know a lot of Democrats. Sometimes they voted for our issues and sometimes they right, haven't. Right, right. One of the big problems is the division. Mm -hmm. People think that there are different types of Americans, mm -hmm. and they make out of all these divisions, mm -hmm. but they're not divided. Mm -hmm. You can walk into a room with a man, I'm a Republican, mm -hmm. but uh, well, you've introduced me to a lot mm -hmm. of men and women who voted for Obama and oh, they're yeah. Democrats, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. and if you talk long enough, you find out you agree with about 90% yeah. of the stuff. Same issues. Yeah, so <laughs> and I don't know much about Sharpton, although he has a reputation. Oh, yeah, being well, a, you know, but... Uh, but but I, uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that the problems our country faces will be solved, mm -hmm. because the American people do have common sense. The people who need are needed in leadership are coming out of the woodwork now, mm -hmm. and uh, almost anyone you talk to, uh, you find that the fundamentals that are of interest in our country are the, you have a lot more common with them than you do in, mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. The uh, political skill, if you want, that uh, opposes our solving our problems is the skill of trying to convince them that uh, there are these divisions there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the divisions are, uh, are minor, but they make them major in order to try to win elections. Good, good, good. Well, hey, on that particular note, this has been just great. Uh, I want to thank you as an Oregonian and thank you for the time that you well, spent. Thanks, thanks for And inviting. continue to spend that, that, that volunteerism as okay. and, and also continue to collect that but you urine. you got to win an election now. Well, collect that urine. I want to yeah, make sure we get that. I'll point. work on the urine. Okay. You and your form people and your friend and your colleagues win that election on February 28th, yes. and I'll just be enjoy watching what you do. Sounds great. Appreciate thank that, brother. And I want to I want to I want to thank thank again the um, cable access over here. I mean, they, they do such a good job. They give me the opportunity to articulate bring folks like you on and whatever because it's all about Oregon. It's Oregon first. Mm -hmm. Oregon first, folks. Yeah. With that, thank you again, Art. Thank you very and much. thank you folks for listening in and looking at us and whatever and and uh, continue to be involved. Again, I'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good one.